Hello, my name's Jake. And I'm Paul. And we're here with a slightly different video today because Gale Force 9 have been kind enough to send us a copy of Star Trek Away Missions early. So we're able to have a look at it. I'm going to teach Paul to play it because yes. you've not seen anything about it, have you? Well, it's not Star Wars. It's no, not Star no. Wars, no. Nope. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but yeah, I'm going to sit down, we're going to teach Paul how to play and we thought we'll, we'll film it as well and show you guys why it's really cool and what we really like about it. Mm -hmm. so. Cool, so I've set up a board to begin with. We'll go over some bits a bit later to do with how you actually play and set up a board during normal play. For the moment, there's a starship. It's two players, 60 to 90 minutes, and it lasts three rounds, no more, no less. You are representing two different factions that have gotten to the wreckage of the Battle of Wolf 359, yep. and you are beaming onto a Federation ship and trying to complete missions as you bring other factions in, so the Klingons and Romulans are trying to get on to get Federation tech, and maybe the Federation try to stop them, okay. might try to scuttle the ship, which is really cool. <coughs> to begin with, I want to talk about the artwork, because the yes. first thing I did was <clears throat> pop this bridge down, and immediately, what did you spot? It was the captain's ready room and, yep. and the briefing room. There's loads of attention to detail. You've got sick bay, actually does have like Crusher's office yep. and things like that. I didn't even realise that Geordie had an office in engineering because usually they chat here yep. um, next to the warp core and this is where all the discussions happen. But he had an office the entire time with sofas, yep. Yep. which I assume he just slept on whilst he was pulling all-nighters to fix the ship. The science lab, which they bring in some of the later series, you've got O'Brien's transporter room. The artwork, absolutely love it. If you turn over any one of the tiles, go for it, grab one. You can see on the other side, it's a ball cube. It is a ball cube. Um, so you... It is one of their central necks I mean. That's it. It's brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely love it. And they're all double-sided for that. So you can play on a Borg ship or a Federation ship uh, out of the core uh, set. Miniatures. So I will pass you your Federation minis now. Because you did cool. ask about them. They're animated styling instead of direct yeah, um, I agree. likeness. Locutus is actually here. So we'll get some, some shots of Jean-Luc Picard turned into a Borg. Uh, spoilers if anybody hasn't watched it from 30 years ago, sorry. Yeah, I've had a long um, time to watch it. But yeah, you, you, <laughs> you've got Riker's away team, so it's Shelby, Worf and Data, and then Commander Riker himself, and then you've got Lacusis's Unimatrix, so him and, and some and four Borg drones. That's what comes in the core set. Yep. There are expansions coming. So, initial impressions. Go for it, Paul, because this is literally the first time you've seen it. I've opened up, popped it down, yes. and I've roped you in to teach you to play. I think it's, it's quite vi uh, bright and vibrant. The areas look exactly what you'd expect them to, so this does look like a Galaxy-class starship. Yep. That does look like engineering. That does look like uh, the medical uh, bay. Yep. I think it's really, really cool. The transport is here. Yep. Everything is kind of where you'd expect to see it. The corridor is quite cool. And yeah. what about the, the terms? You, they're all quite clear, aren't they? So medical, command, operations. Yep. Yep. So they're points you can go and interact with and do those type of checks. Okay, so let's go over mechanics. So the idea of the game is to complete as many missions as you can and score mission points. So you have a mission deck and a support deck. Mm -hmm, I uh, have. There you go. So you have, um, we will adapt at the end of the game, if you've done this, it's worth 35 points. Okay, so that is that is what we're competing for. Yep. Um, you have some which can be repeatable. So there's ways for every time you've done this during the game. And then you also have a big mission. So we've got Protect zero, zero, uh, sorry, Sector 001 zero, zero, here for the Federation. Yep. You get five points. Uh, when one of your characters incapacitates a hostile character, takes five bonus points here, 10 bonus points when one of your character neutralizes one. And at the end of the game, you score all the points you managed to accrue there. So that that's across the game. Right, mechanics. So have a look at one of your characters. Yes. You've got these uh, stats that are down there, so that shows you what they have available. And I've got these really cool little plastic pips. So they go in the holes, mm -hmm. um, and that, that shows how good you are at doing something. So I've got a drone number one of five here. He's got attack one, defense two, and skill three. The reason you have these plastic ones is, as you take damage, you take these pips off. Okay. So you get worse at things, but you choose which. So a lot of your characters can choose to take damage in their movement statistic, yep. but remain effective doing other things. If you've ever run out of these, you need to take another point of damage, then you, you get taken off the board. You're Understood. done. You're out of the game. Uh, but I really liked this because you had a choice of how to take damage, depending on what you're doing. Are you in a combat situation? Fine, I'll deal with my movement and my skill. I'll just... But I've, have you managed to get to the location you need to do the operations test? I don't want to be taking skill off. I'll take my defense, I'll take my attack, I'll take everything else but skill until I've done my mission. When it's your turn to activate, you will uh, have one of your figures on the board. So we will set them up now. When you deploy, uh, you take alternating uh, choices for deployment. Uh, you can't turn up on a tile that somebody else is on. So I will turn up in medical. There you go, I'll be there. I'll put Riker on the bridge. That seems like a good place for him, in the yes. chair. Uh, and where else? Engineering. Borg turn up in engineering, don't they? So he's in with the sofa. So you can now deploy your ones because I only start with two Borg. Oh, okay. And then so the rest have continually arrive. Data in the corridor. Yep. He's running a scan with his tricorder. Yep. 
And I've got uh, Mr. Wharf's going to start in the armory yep, because good. he wants to find the guns. Yeah. And then I've got Shelby. Yeah. Uh, she's Can't be in the same room as someone else. So she's having a bit of a row with Riker. <laughs> yeah. Other side of the ship. Then. Yeah. She's going to go in here. Yeah. We could have them all playing poker here if you want. We There's could. Three of them. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, when well, it's your turn to activate, you get two actions. You may do the same one twice if you want to. Um, if you choose to move, then you get two points of movement for each pip you've got. So I only get to move two as the Borg, um, but you, whilst you've got your pips in, in movement, can yes. move four spaces to begin with. So would you like to draw a mission from your deck and start trying to achieve that? Yes. I'll, I'll do the same. I will do that. Who goes first? You can go first. We technically roll off. We haven't done the dice we have yet. So okay. We'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to take a mission deck right, card. Yep. I'm going to reveal it now. I have neutralized threat. Yep. Um, score this card when a character incapacitates or neutralizes a hostile character. Yep, cool. And go on, grab, grab another one as well. So something else you can work towards. Okay, whoop. Um, eject the destabilizing warp core. There, you go. there we are. I'll put this one back. Okay, right. So what do you need to do to uh, eject the warp core? Well, you would think that would be a simple process, but normally only an engineer can do it. <laughs> so I will take an engineer skill test at the operations terminal in the engineering department. That sounds like a good place to do it. Well, you can't eject it from anywhere else apart from the bridge. So immediately take a command skill test with a different character at any command terminal. If you pass both tests, you score this card. There you go. Yes. So let's see if you can do that. So who are you going to send to try and do that first? Right, Mr. well... Data or Commander Shelby? Well, I think... Well, there's, a, there's an awfully close Bolg. Yeah, Bolg. it's just chilling. So if I go here, I can operate it from this one? Correct, that's in engineering. It yeah. looks good to me. So I'm going to do Data. So I've, I've popped in there. Yep. So I'm going to do Mr. Data. So how far can he move? Well, he's got lots of pips. He does, yeah. So he can move four spaces. Yep. So one, two, nice. yep. and there. Brilliant, yep, cool. So now he's going to take his action. Yes, I'm going to take my action. Okay, so this is where we bring in the dice roll mechanic. Oof. So here's your dice board. Yes. Okay, so you are the person who is attacking, or you are the tester, um, and I am the person who is then defending or, or challenging you. Mm -hmm. So, with this particular one, so you need to do an engineering test. What is your skill value? My skill value for Mr. Data, he's probably quite good at computers, I would hope. He's good at uh, he is skill three. Brilliant, and then he has keywords just at the top. Uh, so mine have got Borg and Drone, uh, but you mine have got computers. Yes, okay. <laughs> so he's got a computer. Is it a computer test? It is, isn't it? Have another dice. Take a computer test uh, and operations. An engineering skill test, I'm afraid. Oh, I thought it was computer. Yeah, but don't worry, my friend, because he also has engineering. There we go. Cool. Exercise. He's good at spaceships. Um, and uh, he also has science and android as a keyword. Yeah, cool. So you roll these up, and you're looking for fours to succeed. Okay. Cool. Uh -huh. Success. So you would line them up there. Yeah. Um, and then if they're up, sorry, on the other side, you would line them up there. Um, yeah. If I'm opposing you, so we will, for the purposes of showing, I will have three dice for opposing. I would line these up, and they would do this. So uh, we've equaled. So you haven't succeeded here, but you have here. Uh, you have here, and this, if it's ever against an unopposed, four plus naturally against an opposed counts as a success. Yes. Okay. So. Perfect, you have succeeded at this test. Brilliant. Yes. So, what do you then need to do? So these would come off out of the way, because you've done one half of it. Yep, then I immediately take a command skill test with a different character at any command terminal. And um, do we have, yes he yeah, is. He's, he's, he's upon it. <laughs> <laughs> cool, so uh, what's his skill rating? Well. Commander Riker. Commander Riker is uh, a skill rating of two. Yeah, he's not as good as data, is well, he? Well, he's not a robot. <laughs> Yeah, and he has a command skill. Yep, so extra dice. As a, as a term for him. So off we go then, is it? Yep, that's it. And we're going so to do... how many do I have to pass to... Um... So normally you see the success, yes. but we're going to be running this opposed again. Right, just, okay. just to Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. So line them up on the board. Oh. Oh, dear. So at the moment, uh, I'm beating you and you're not, not beat winning here. Yeah. So we need to do so. So the other deck of cards you have are yeah. your support deck. And those are lots of abilities you can use for what the cards say. But if nothing else, you can also discard them to re-roll any number of the dice you don't wish for. Oh, okay. And uh, you would choose first, and then it would go to me, and back and forth and back and forth until we both passed. So you would discard a card. Which ones would you like to re-roll? 
The two. The two, yep. So you would discard a card from hand. Yeah, that's fine. And okay. then uh, re-roll a two. So. Okay. And this is where you're going to roll a natural six. Oh, that's even worse. But we're going to you roll a natural oh, six. Oh, there we are. I got a six. That's it. So this then pushes these down because mm -hmm. it is the new highest dice result. Yep. Um, so this was a bad example. Um, but you have uh, fail, fail, but you have passed. Yes. Here. So this has passed overall. Yes. You have success, which point that means you do Eject score the stabilised command uh, warp core, sorry. That's it. And th this uh, dice mechanic here, this is intrinsic through combat. So in a moment, we'll have this ball come and do a, a, a shot. So yep. you, the data is done too. He's moved for one, and he's done an action. So yes. he, he's all done. So we'll do this ball next. Oh, which means he gets an activated token. Which so goes, we know he's gone. That's it, and it goes on his card. Yes. So Borg will now come over here, and we'll have a, an attack. So let's get these out of the way. There you go. So this is two of five, not one of five. Mm -hmm. um, attack dice is zero, but it's melee only. So I'm trying to um, assimilation tube you. Nice. So I'm going to roll two dice. Um, what is Mr. Data's defense? So Mr. Defeater's, uh, Mr. Data's, sorry, defense is a three. He's really? very good. Actually. <laughs> he's, he's he might be the best one. He is. Oh dear. Well, uh, I roll a pair of twos. And I get three dice. You for do that? get three dice. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. So I will discard a card, and I'm going to choose to re-roll these two. Yeah. That's that's not very fun. No, that's that's found a Borg. So you can discard a card and re-roll some of yours. Yeah. Would you like to? Yeah. Um, so. I will discard two cards. Just one card for any re-roll any number of dice. Oh, okay. Well, there yeah. we are. Oh, that still is rubbish. It's not looking so good, is it? Yeah. So, if we leave it here, then the, these two I have not succeeded, but I've succeeded here, um, and I've, I've nothing here. So I end up doing you point of damage, yep. plus one, because my weapon is plus one damage. Nice. So you have two points of damage to sign Mr. Data, so two of those gold... Oh, thingamajiggers have to come off, yeah? Yes. I will move attack and defence. Yeah, keep him yeah, ready keep with him skills. skilled up, because he's very good at those, those technical jobs. Now, there are extra rules for backup, so if you have an extra friend present they can add dice for various bits and there's also options for taking cover as an action so you can improve your defenses yep. and of course then there's a card which we've been discarding to do something you can just play them so should we have a quick look over the anatomy of one of these cards yes so i've got an equipment card um which is a neurotransmitter uh, i can play on a board character um when you play this uh, card roll a die and put it here interrupt i can remove one of the die results and replace it with this dice so, and then as an action, I can remove any dice from this card to roll it and put it on this card. So, mm -hmm. basically, this goes on a particular Borg and upgrades them. Whereas yep. I think the card you forgot is probably... Uh, I went for an event one, so Perfect. this is obviously something that's happening. Uh, transfer control. So, take a computer, skill test at a terminal. If passed, change this type uh, of this terminal yep. by placing a terminal token over it. So, you can obviously then... Say, for instance, you run out of commanders, I would take it up and turn it into an operations exactly. one or so a science you, one. That's it. You could turn, yeah. Mr. Data could turn that into a command terminal. Excellent. Understood. So, yeah, we'll leave those to one side. So, that, those are the sort of cards. You refill your hand each turn, mm -hmm. um, so they are quite free and easy to use. And you're only going to play for three rounds. So, th this very basic of how you move around and how you do actions and how you score objectives is, is what the game is all about. You have special abilities on most of your characters. So, yes. I've got Scout. Uh, I can take an action to return a mission card to the deck and search for a scout mission instead um, and then turn to the next wave of mine come on which includes Locutus um, and I have the ability to assimilate some of your guys so if you take oh. too much damage you can become they, they become this you join the winning team that's exactly yeah there it. we are that's very cool how many cards would you normally get in your hand five okay so, so they are quite a big resource to throw away to do stuff with yep. but as you've seen there's plenty of times they can because you bump everything down it can make a big difference. Like, well, I'm, I'm losing, losing, but if I get a five or a six, then these push down and compete with threes and twos, which yeah. means I'm winning, winning. Okay, so after three rounds, we tot up all of our points and we work out who's won. There are some tiebreakers, but really, there's it's a bit of a point salad because you've got lots of different options to, to score points. Um, one of the bits we didn't really discuss is bonus tokens. So if you are outnumbered at the beginning of the round, for every character your opponent has more than you, you get a bonus action. And these just sit around and you can spend them to activate a character again. And it can be before they've activated, it doesn't stop them activating later in the turn, but that's a really nice mechanic that if you get a bit of a battering because Worf comes along and starts chopping people in two with his bat left, yeah. then, well, this guy's going to run over and do this mission and run over there and his activation and, and try and turn you into a Borg. So that, that mechanic works really well. The flow of the game I love because it's, it's I go, you go, but no one character should have an absolutely devastating turn. 
the amount of damage your characters can take looks like a lot, but it's really not, because my boar can take three, and his fourth point of damage, he's, he's off. off. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Next steps. So, there are ways to build your own decks, so you can focus a bit more on what you want to put in and what you think you can do. There are expansions coming, so there's Gowron, uh, Picard's got his own away team that's coming, and there's Seller for the Romulans, so bringing in the new factions. And then there's also going to be specialists, so you can swap certain characters in and out. The core set's Wolf 359, but they're bringing in Gowron. They can bring in Cardassians, Dominion, Ferengi. There's so much here. Yeah. It, it's just it's a smorgasbord. I can't wait. The deck building and the specialists, I think, give you a lot of options, put your own creativity into it. Pros for me, you open and ready to play. It's got that X-Wing, God tier feel to it of just open and start playing. I really look forward to seeing how the Klingons play and how, how sneaky the Romulans can be. Um, but yeah, the question will be in a year's time with a lot more packs, what will it look like as a game? I, I feel like I need some kind of red laser and I've become the Borg. You can that would be one, right? That would be amazing if I was the Borg, wouldn't it? Yep. That would be amazing. Uh, I can sort that. It's going to be ace. Yep. Oh, do you have to hold it as well? Yeah, oh yeah. 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 There we go, we've, we've had a look at it, we've had a play. Paul is converted and is fully borged up wanting to play, play more of it. Um, yep. So we really enjoyed it. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for Gale Force 9 again for sending a copy early. What's your favourite though? Uh, I really like the figures. I think the figures are amazing. If you like Star Trek, you will like these. The colours are really nice and warm when you're playing the game, and it gives you those figures just really, really make the difference, I think. Yeah, agreed. And the price point's really good, yeah. um, and the expansions as well, and the fact that you don't have to glue them. You just, you just open it and play. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Uh, I really like the, um, the card and damage balance mechanics of trying to work out when do you use a card or discard a card for re-rolls, yeah. and which stat are you you're taking down, because you can't keep your, your crew healthy through the fights. Yeah, indeed. So you, you, you pay for that later and go, oh, I'll just do movement, and then so you need to run across somewhere. Like, even just a corridor away from a boar, and they're chasing you with a blue tack laser sight. The cutest of Firestorm. Love it. Yep. Um, but yeah, yeah, thank you very much for joining us, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thank you so much, bye. Resistance is futile. <laughs>